Let's learn how to make a house in SketchUp. Right, this is the house that we're going to try and make. Now, I want to create a brand new SketchUp document. So up to the menu and you want to be on the home section here. Create new and make sure that you choose meters. There we go. Now, we normally go ahead and delete this person straight away, but it would be quite useful, I think, to keep the woman there so that we get a sense of scale for the house. So what I'm going to do is just click on the woman and I'm going to use the move tool, that's M, and I'm just going to grab a corner here and I'm just going to move her over here somewhere just so she's out of the way because I actually want to start building my house in this origin point here. So let's go to the rectangle tool, that's R on the keyboard, and then to draw the rectangle, single click to start and single click to stop but if you look down the bottom right of the screen you'll see that it's showing me the dimensions of the rectangle that I'm drawing and there are specific dimensions that I want you to use here so I want you to use 20 that's meters comma 10 20 meters by 10 meters so I'm just gonna scroll out with the wheel Go to the orbit tool, O, so I can look around. And with the orbit tool, hold shift and it puts you into this grab mode, which is nice and handy so you can actually really get a good look. So you can see that if that's the size of the woman, what we're creating here is quite a large house. Maybe she's got quite a bit of money and uh, she's building her dream home. I don't know. So the next job, we need to turn this flat rectangle into the floor of the house. So use the push pull tool, P on the keyboard single click to start, lift the mouse up, that's so that SketchUp knows which direction to push pull in because you can also go down but we want to lift the mouse up and again look at the bottom right you can see that it's showing me the height and what I'm going to do is let go of the mouse and type in the height that I want which is actually 0.15 you can miss out the zero, 0 0.15 meters that's 15 centimeters so I can press return and I've now got a 0.15 meter 15 centimeter high floor now I'm just going to undo that quickly because I want to show you that you can actually if you click and move the mouse up again you can actually type in 15 centimeters and that also works just in case you prefer to type it in in centimeters so there's our basic floor but it's a bit boring and if you looked at the example at the start you'll have noticed that the floor plan of my building was a little more interesting than just a rectangle so the next thing we're going to do is customize this a bit to make the floor more interesting. So to do this, I actually need to mark a point along here where I want a new line to be. So I'm going to use the tape measure tool. Press T on the keyboard, brings up the tape measure, and I'm going to just find a point right there, move the mouse along, and again, look at the length on the bottom right of the screen there. I'm actually going to let go of the mouse and type in five. So I know that I've just created a point here that is five meters from the edge. If I now go to the line tool, L, I can now click on that guide point and go straight down, click again, and I've now created a line right down on that face. So if I go to the push pull tool, I can single click. Notice how this face is now split in two. So I can single click this face, push the mouse, and you guessed it, I'm going to let go and type in the amount that I want, which is going to be five meters. So I've now, I've now just cut out a space that is five meters by five meters. And this guide that you can see sitting here, I can now go to the erase tool, E on the keyboard, and I can click that just to rub it out. There we go. So I'm now going to repeat that on the other side. So let's get to the orbit tool, spin this around, hold shift, so that I can move across like this. Tape measure tool, click, move the mouse, type in five meters, there's that guide point. L for the line tool, click, straight down, click. And then back to the push pull tool, single click, move the mouse up so it knows which direction to go in, and then five on the keyboard. There we go. And that's the basic floor plan of my house. The next job is going to be to create the walls. 
Luckily for us, there is a tool that is perfect for this, and it's the offset tool. So you get the offset tool by pressing F on the keyboard. It lives over here, same place as the push pull tool, and it's really easy to use. You single click, as always, to start, and you can see that it's creating an edge that lines up perfectly with the outside shape and I can simply decide how far away from that outside edge I want my new edges to be. And if you look at the bottom right of the screen, you can see that it's showing the distance from that outside edge. And I actually want the distance to be the same as the height of the floor. Can you remember what that was? 15 centimeters. So again, type in either 15 centimeters or 0.15. And there we go. I've now got a face going all the way around the outside which I can now use to create my wall. And we're gonna do that using the push-pull tool. So P for push-pull. I can click, make sure you grab the right face. It's very easy to get the wrong one at this point. You could scroll in and zoom if you want to to get the right one. Make sure it's that one. Click, lift the mouse up. Now, at this point, you want to make sure that you're push-pulling with the create new face option toggled on. If you look at the bottom of my screen right now, you can see that it says control equals toggle create new starting face. So if I press control on my keyboard, or if you're on a Mac, it's the alt key. Tap control and you can see a little plus appears next to my pointer. And now there is a line at the bottom here. Switch it off again. No line. On again, there's a line. Now that line shows us where the floor is. And so that's really, really helpful, especially when it comes to cutting the doorway, the external doorway into the wall. So definitely make sure that option is on. And I'm gonna lift my mouse up and I'm, I'm gonna type in the value that I want. Let go of the mouse, 2.8 meters. Now I'm not an architect, I'm not an interior designer, but I did go and do some Googling and I kind of looked up some of the numbers for this. So that floor, 15 centimeters and the wall, 15 centimeters and the wall height, 2.8 meters, they are approximately what you'd expect in a real house. So now it's time to put the interior walls in. Now there's lots of different ways of doing this. The golden rule here really is to make sure that your walls are all the same thickness. We don't want to be adding new walls inside that are thicker than these exterior walls. It just looks nice and neat if all of our walls are 15 centimeters wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is extend this wall so it comes all the way across to here. So the best way to do that is actually to use the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle from here that is across by exactly the right amount. So it needs to be, now this can be quite tricky to do it this way. I'm gonna show you a better way in a minute. But if I scroll in, um, it, it does actually, there we go, it will actually snap, it will find that edge. And if you look at the bottom, it's now 2.8 by 0.15 meters. That's perfect. I could click and there's my rectangle. But as I said, you have to kind of zoom in and sometimes it's a bit twitchy and it doesn't always find it. So a better way might be to, let's undo that, use the tape measure and I can just go to this edge here move my tape measure across and the tape measure snaps straight away. It's much, much easier at finding that edge. So I can now click. And now that I've drawn the tape measure guideline, I can go to my rectangle tool and the rectangle tool finds it much easier now to just snap to the guide. But that's what we need. We need a rectangle that lined up perfectly with the wall. And if I now use my push pull tool, I can simply grab that new face, pull it across and just keep going, keep going, snap. It will snap perfectly to the, the wall on the opposite side. Now I can click and you'll see that that now lines up really, really nicely. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Orbit tool, hold shift so I can move across this way. Go to my tape measure tool, click, go across. And here, look, it's not snapping. It's just sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If I zoom in, it might get, it might manage it more. So this is something you'll notice in SketchUp. Sometimes it seems to snap really well to existing edges and sometimes it's a bit clunky. But we've always got the option to just let go of the mouse and type it in. So this is gonna be 0.15, the width of our wall. I've now got a guideline that is 0.15 away from this edge. 
And now I can go to my rectangle tool and make sure you get that point right there, down to here. And now I'm gonna do just what I did before. Use the push pull tool, click there, pull it all the way, snap. So I now want to try and connect these two together. I want one long wall going all the way across here. So I'm gonna start by going to my tape measure tool and go over to this side, draw a tape measure guide all the way across. And again, it's snapped, which is helpful. But I can see that that's 4.85 meters. Click there and I want another one now from there. That's 0.15, there we go. And now I can use my rectangle tool and I can just fill that in with a rectangle. There. And now use the push pull tool, click all the way across, snap. Make sure, see how it hasn't snapped yet? Make sure it's definitely snapped. There we go. And now if you wanted to just neaten this up a little bit, all these little lines that you can see you can rub those out with your razor if you want to, just so that the top of your house looks nice and clean. So let's get rid of that one. And then there's one over here. Use the erase tool. Be very careful that you don't accidentally erase a really important line like that. And if you do, then just undo. It was that one there. All right, that's the basic wall structure of my house completed. The final thing that we're going to do is actually add in doorways. So to create a doorway, let's add a doorway in just here. The basic principle is to draw a rectangle and then push it through to the other side of the wall. So I'll show you what I mean. If I just grab the rectangle tool, I'm just going to draw any old shape here. Go to the push pull tool, click to start push pulling. And you'll notice that if I push push it through, eventually, there we go, it gets on face, it gets to the other side of the wall, can't really go any further. And you'll notice this funny pattern appearing. So when you get that funny pattern, that means that you're touching the opposite side of the, the wall. And all you've got to do is click, and SketchUp will actually cut out. Like this, you can't see it very well, let's spin it around, there we go. You can see that it's cut a hole in the wall. So let me just undo that because I do want to get the doorways roughly the right size. Now I did Google this as well. There is a specific height and width for doorways, um, but I think just to get, make life easy, we're gonna go for one meter wide by two meters tall. That's about right. So I'm gonna click, move my mouse, let go and type in one comma two. And it makes a doorway that's roughly the right size. And I'm gonna push that through. Now notice here, I've gone to my push-pull tool, but it's not highlighting when I'm hovering over stuff. In fact, this one over here is currently highlighted, and if I click, it might try and push-pull this. This is a weird glitch in SketchUp. It happens sometimes, easy to fix. So if you ever find yourself in this position where the push-pull tool doesn't seem to be highlighting the face that you're hovering over, just go to the selection tool, it's the arrow here, the space bar, and then you can select the face that you want. Go back to the push-pull tool, and now we should be good to go. So let's click that, push it through, and there we go. So I'm now gonna repeat this a few more times to make doorways in the rest of my house. Okay, so I got a bit more creative. You can see that I separated this big space here into some more rooms. This is gonna be the front of the house here. And I've added in some doorways, but I thought I'd show you how you could create a different kind of um, entrance way so instead of putting a simple door shape here I want this to be a kind of wider um, entrance way with an arched top now, it is pretty straightforward the first thing I'm going to do I want to find the midpoint I want this to be perfectly centered so I'm going to go to my tape measure tool I'm going to click the edge move across and then go up to this edge and it should find the midpoint there it is that line is now perfectly down the center and I'm gonna make this twice as wide. So if I put a guide coming from that middle point one meter to the side, so one, I'm now gonna use the rectangle tool, start down here, and I'm gonna add a rectangle 
in here that is twice the width of the normal door, so that's going to be 2 meters, and I'm going to make it 1.9 meters high. And you'll see why. Like that. I'm now going to use the arc tool, that's A on the keyboard, it lives over here, and it's really easy to use. You simply click one point, this is a two point arc, click one point, click another point, and then lift the mouse up, and you'll see it kind of creates an arch. And at the bottom right, I can decide how high I want the arch to be. So I'm actually going to make this, if you remember it was 0.9 high. So if to make it the same height as the doorways, it would be 0.1, but I'm going to make it slightly higher than the other doorways. So I think I'm going to go for about 0.3. I'm now going to use the Erase tool to rub out that line that was created when we drew the rectangle. And now use the push-pull, push it through, click. And you can see that now this creates more of a kind of grand entranceway for my house. Now what I haven't done yet is added the exterior door, so let's just finish off by doing that. So tape measure tool, click that edge there, find the midpoint there, and now I can click from the midpoint, this is going to be 0.5, half the width of a normal door, rectangle, click, let go of the mouse and type in 1, 2. And then use the push pull tool to push it make sure I get that on face, the weird pattern appears, click. Now at this point we need to make sure that your building is saved so that in the next video we can open it up and carry on. So head over to the save button and you'll see a SketchUp folder appear. Sometimes it takes a little while, there we go. And then down here give it a suitable name, I'm going to call it House 1 and click save. So there you go. That's your basic walls and doorways done. In the next video, we'll learn how you can make the windows. That's going to involve learning how to do duplicating and rotating, and we'll do a bit of decorating as well. See you then.